Well, greetings everyone. I hope that uh, you're having a delightful Sabbath if you're watching this on the Sabbath. Otherwise, I hope that whatever day you're living is a delight for you as well, just not as delightful as a seventh day Sabbath should be. I want to bring out some things about Deuteronomy chapter 28 uh, concerning things that are taking place right now as, you know, being child play to what is yet to come. Uh, I also had brought out here about five days ago this truly urgent two-week uh, court in teen coming and in here I showed the document uh, that was sent out also speaking about a possible two-week court in teen uh, to take place and of course you got Theodore Daniel jumps on here with some of his uh, ultimate wisdom and I answered him a couple times but I just I just had nothing else to say to the guy, and he kind of quit me, I guess, you know, his last statement. I tried to find it on a video, but I guess I'm just unteachable, and therefore he's given up on me. So he, he's not coming back, he said. So it's been nice there, uh, Theodore. Quite enlightening. Hope you enjoy the rest of your life. Anyway, I brought out these things here, and what I did want to show... Uh, is there are some things taking place. Uh, I had mentioned in there also that it didn't have a date on the document, so it's kind of hard to say when they're going to get set up what they were planning or if they're going to just drop it. But it seems like there's been a little buzz where it hadn't been before from what I had noticed. Uh, one of those... Uh, here you've got uh, this here video that I recommend everybody to watch. It's only uh, 10 minutes and 5 seconds long, but it's from uh, the site Everything Inside Me. That's the name of his channel. And what he brings out here is the ritual use of the mask, the uh, quartentine that is to come where you're totally secluded. Uh, they believe that by bringing you through this that you become initiates into the, uh, the Babylon mystery religion. He brings out a lot of detail here and I was doing a lot of research on this. That's why I've been quiet for a while. I was trying to compound things but this fella does a real decent job. I hope you'll watch it. Uh, here I had to start this video here because when I first do it, it makes me look like Rudolph or something, and I'm sorry about that, Ashley. <laughs> you know, Dana Ashley, she's a terrific lady. Now she brings out the point about the privilege they erased from history, uh, wherein she goes into detail about even having white slaves. Now, the question might come up in your mind. Well, you know, in, in what I got in total from her research, which is excellent, is the reason you don't really hear about white slaves is because, different from the black slaves, the white slaves were usually turned into eunuchs. <laughs> so they didn't have children. And then the others that weren't, uh, they weren't allowed to marry and such. Now, I also had this envisioning in my brain, which I don't get all that often, but there was a movie called Ice Pirates. I-C-E and Pirates, as you know, and Captain Jack Sparrow. And in the movie, there's, and I believe that the, the main actress in there, if you look it up, you know, and it's a pretty funny movie, you know, but it's, uh, you know, a Christian movie, got a lot of sex, it really doesn't show because it's older, but I believe it was Elvis Presley's daughter, I'm thinking, or, no, was it that, or uh, Bill uh, Cosby, Bing Cosby? the singer, one or the other's daughter, I think, <laughs> I can be mistaken there too, but anyway, in a scene in there, uh, the one of the head pirates, he had got captured and he was being brought through a facility to turn into slaves, and <laughs> they were going to castrate him in the movie, and of course, you know, this is... <laughs> 
you know, what I was thinking after I had watched this video, you know, it was like, wow, you know, they, they did show these things even in Hollywood because they were almost all white slaves. There's only one guy behind them that, you know, was also a pirate, but he was black. <laughs> and he was, you know, pretty close to being the only black that was a slave there. All the rest were white. But anyway, Ashley brings out a really decent uh, study here concerning the white slavery that's not spoken of. Uh, here, this is from Dragon Speaks Behind the Mask. This is uh, Beast Watch News. I want you to listen to just a little bit of this. I hope to leave a link for you. But listen to what this lady says. And the entire thing for 59 minutes and 27 seconds she goes on, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, doesn't matter, you know, she's, you know, one that's bringing out truth, and you can figure it out if you go to the link and listen to the whole thing. Listen to this. The article further says that flu shots, it seems, are one more way the medical establishment can literally murder children and adults, creating widespread vulnerability to the coronavirus pandemic which will no doubt surge back this fall as regular flu shots work to suppress the immune systems of millions. Recognize that the people pushing flu shots are medical murderers and many are deliberately trying to kill as many people as possible to create demand for the high profit coronavirus vaccines that are about to be unleashed on America probably before the end of this year, he says. It's the perfect crime. Okay, so you can go to this uh, channel here. I hope to leave the link for you. And listen to the rest of that. It's pretty fascinating. There's a lot of things this woman speaks very boldly that may upset you. So, uh, And here on Dave Hodges, the Common Sense Show. This here shows it was submitted by Dave Hodges on Sunday, July 19th, 2020. And it's entitled, Arizona Governor is Granted the Right to Forcibly Vaccinate and Indefinitely Confine Individuals with Absolutely No Legal Oversight. Now, I'd like to bring to your attention here, it's all white. Remember, that first seal when it was popped, it's on a horse that's white. You know, this, the rider, the spirit that's on that horse loves white, has a white horse, and the UN, and then now here the FEMA, you know, it's all part of the same structure, you know, it's all part of the same kingdom of this earth, you know, we're not part of this earth, we're not part of this world, we're just pilgrims journeying through until our king comes to bring forth his kingdom, setting it up, using us to help him do so, he could do it without our help, you know, but he, he likes to let us think that we're important sometimes. Anyway, here the first uh, sentence says, Recently, Arkansas alleged CV, and then, of course, you know, you got the one nine victims, were transported what I would call a FEMA medical martial law facility. This is not an isolated incident. Arizona has granted Governor Doug Ducey the authority to create, operate, maintain concentration camps. And it goes on from there. I hope to leave you a link for that as well if you'd like to check into that. But you can see these are uh, centers being put up. They're getting ready for what is to come. Uh, now, kind of amazing, I, uh, I was prompted to bring part of this due to a fellow that's... Uh, been doing some real soul searching and everything and he you know and also you know to point out the fact I have 781 views on this one video from May 23rd 2018 there's 781 people that watched at least part of this but anyway it, it seems like it's gaining more traction again here for some reason maybe it's the title but a certain individual was kind of concerned about, you know, sin. 
as far as things that he had done in the past is he going to be held liable this that the other thing and of course you know you didn't know our king so everything before the time that our king and our king isn't going to once you come to know him he's not going to just uh, wash you of your sins it's a process you have to go through to be entitled to acquire that blood because once you get it if you turn from it you're a goner <laughs> you know so the sins that y'all have done right now up to now you know for most of you because of the lack of actually knowing our king and knowing you're supposed to keep his laws and his commandments and to please him above all things to love him more than mother brother sister son daughter car dog snake cat rat whatever if you don't love our king more than anything or anyone you're not worthy of him once you come to that knowledge and understanding though if you desire to sin then uh, that's where Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26, 27, 28, 29 goes on to explain what takes place when one knows, once they come to the knowledge of the truth, if they sin willfully, knowingly or intentionally after that day, then there's no forgiveness for sin because our king's only going to lay his life down one time for you, so... Would he wash you clean if, you know, you wanted to keep his law but didn't know that eating pork was a sin, for instance? So now you think that you were washed with blood, or if our king actually did, and you started eating that pork, willfully, knowingly, and intentionally eating it, because that's the only way it's going to get in your mouth, Otherwise, you're going to fight against it. No, I don't want that damnable thing even near me. Don't even touch me with it. You know, but if you allow it into you, then, you know, that is willful, known, and intentional sin. That's why our king's not going to wash you completely clean until you're turned over to him by the schoolmaster, which I've explained in many videos in the past. The schoolmaster is the law. And once you learn all of the law and you're keeping those points that pertain to you diligently and with love, then it turns you over to where you actually do meet our king. That's what the schoolmaster does. And then by that point, you already have these laws so engraved into you. And our father says, you know, that's what the new covenant is. It's where the laws are engraved into you. In your inward parts, they're written. <laughs> they're chiseled right in there through tests and trials and tribulations to the point where the schoolmaster gives you to our king and then it talks about as though the schoolmaster is no longer needed because it's written in you. You're not going to do anything against any one of the laws. You're to that point where our king can now give you the true faith which is the trust in him only. You know, it's no longer dress up and, and play time, you know, play play adults, play mommy and daddy, you know, play whatever, you know, children up there in the attic and do an old box pulling out the old wedding dress and daddy's tuxedo and stand in front of the mirror with it trailing away behind them, you know. And, their little feet are on where the waist is, you know, with the dress, but they look in that mirror, man, and they think they made it. And that's where the whole world is today, you know, with the religions and everything else that's being taught. They just, they think, so therefore they are. It, it doesn't work that way. Uh, once you do get turned over by the schoolmaster to our king, then yes, you're forgiven and your robes are then clean. And if you ever sin again afterwards, willfully, knowingly, or intentionally, you're going to die. <laughs> you know, our king comes back for this resurrection. He's going to raise both the living and the dead. He's going to raise those for their righteous reward and, and those for damnation as well. You know, so the first resurrection, you know, 
when it talks about blessed are you if you're in the first resurrection. You know, it's not speaking about those that have been condemned. It is speaking to those who have endured. But anyway, here I wanted to show you in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Please read this chapter yourselves, everybody. These things, some of them are taking place already and have been for a while, but this full book hasn't been opened completely. And what you see out there with this little COV and the I and the D and the one with the nine afterwards, you know, all these things that they they try to block, you know, people from bringing anything out about these. They'll take down your videos and all sorts of stuff. But you got news agencies and everyone else can do it, you know. But you got to bring out the truth on these, you know, so you shall be cursed. But anyway, here in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28, I wanted to point out here in verse 15. The first 14 verses out are how you will be blessed if you keep the commandments diligently, the laws, the commandments. It says here in Deuteronomy 28, 15, But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of Yahweh your Father. Now this word here, L-O-R-D, and especially all capital letters, man, this, this has got so many people so deceived, you know. Alan Hugh, anyway, uh, he uh, has a real problem because he sees that this is in the Bible, and it is. It, it, Satan's had thousands of years to put a lot of things in the Bible, to slip things in here and there. And for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, you know, ever since the original 1611 King James perversion was first printed and uh, published and broadcast, you know, sold to everybody that would buy a copy, this has been in there, the lard, but you can't find a Jesus in there, nor can you find a Jew or a John or a Joseph. They're, you're not going to find these things. There wasn't a letter J. And that's since just 1611. Now, after that, you can see where in every Bible, for the most part, and many different translations as well, has the Jesus in there. And the Jesus wasn't even invented until shortly after the printing and the publishing and distributing of the original 1611 King James perversion. It also had the Lord in here, but it also had showed where I brought out in many places, uh, is this a, yeah, Jeremiah 23, 27 here. It says, who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor, as their neighbors, as their fathers have forgot my name, the name of Yahweh, for Baal, for Baal. And who is Baal? Let's go right to it right here. I'll show you. This is the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance for Baal, for Baal here. It's the Hebrew word, 1168. Let's click on it, and what it brings up here, it shows. Transliteration, Baal, Baal, it shows how to do it. You want to hear how it goes? Strong's H, 1168, Baal, Baal. So the form <laughs> just below that. Okay. Baal. All right, that's enough. Thank you. I was already incorrect, okay? Baal. <laughs> Sounds like a sheep or a goat, I should say. Anyway, the first definition for Baal is Lord, L-O-R-D. And what is Lord? It's the supreme male divinity of the Phoenicians or Canaanites. Please remember, the children went a-whoring after the gods of the land when they left the wilderness. And it was the land of the Canaanites who also honored the same gods as the Phoenicians did. But they entered this land of the Canaanites. They went a whoring after their gods. So then what takes place here is that in Urimia, chapter 23, verse 27, Urimia is giving a historical, factual statement of what took place since the children left the wilderness and Moshe went to sleep. And they went off into the promised land, the land of the Canaanites. They went worshiping. They went a-whoring spiritually after the gods of the Canaanites. 
The chiefest deity is in English today known as God. That's who El and Elion and Elohim and all them come from is this male supreme divinity of the Canaanite pantheon. Now, El or Elion or Eloa, God's son, is Baal, who in English is Lord, as you've seen in the definition. Baal equals Lord, but it was all small letters. Well, guess what? When the Greeks were writing everything, it was all small letters. They didn't have no capital letters in the Greek alphabet. There is no capitalization of anything in the Greek alphabet. It's all one size, one size fits all. So the small L-O-R-D was the very same as the capital L-O-R-D or the all capital L-O-R-D which is, you know, what I had uh, commented on here. You know, I, I explain it to a dear friend here, you know, kingdom-minded, so please don't take offense to it, my friend. It's uh, everything else that you're saying, you know, I can't uh, confirm or, uh, you know, deny either. I just try to keep out of prophecy, but, you know, sometimes I can't. But as far as when things are going to come to pass and this and that, you know, I believe everything the prophets have spoken, but I don't understand a whole lot of it. Not until our king reveals certain things to me. And I know one thing for sure. I've got to watch my words. We all need to watch our words. Remember, our Heavenly Father spoke. And look what came about. Man, in 6,000 years that we've been on this earth, almost 6,000 years, has not even searched out every place that our Father created in six days. So you tell me who's greater. Our Father's greater. Now here in Deuteronomy 28, 15, it says, But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of Yahweh your Father, to observe carefully all His commandments and His statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Curse shall you be in the city, curse shall you be in the country. All these curses take place. And then I wanted to show you something, you know, because all sorts of things are taking place. You even got this woman here, uh, it talks about, you even got this woman here in Deuteronomy 28:56. It says, the tender and delicate woman among you who would not venture to set the sole of her foot on the ground because of her delicateness and sensitivity, will refuse to the husband of her bosom and to her son and her daughter, her placenta, which comes out from between her feet, meaning she's going to eat it by herself, see? Her placenta, her placenta which comes out from between her feet, and her children whom she bears, for she will eat them secretly for lack of everything in the siege and desperate straits in which your enemy shall distress you at all your gates. And you see this is starting to take place. Uh, I believe the first horseman, the second horseman, maybe the third uh, is on its way here. We'll just have to see. But anyway, it talks about... Uh, you know, that she's going to eat her placenta and such. Here it says in Deuteronomy 28:58, If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name. And it certainly isn't this. This is uh, what was added thousands of years later okay the Lord is an English and God is an English term for Baal and El and Elohim and Elion and Adonai and all these others that are of the Canaanite pantheon which we have to leave behind we cannot be calling on these lords and gods when we know the name of our Heavenly Father we also know his son's name I call him Yahshua, others call him Yeshua, but if you call him the Jesus, 
You're calling on one that your fathers didn't even know existed. One of those gods because it was newly come up. Jesus is, you know, not even since the 1611 King James Version. It wasn't before that that there was a Jesus. The Jesus was invented after the original 1611 King James Perversion. Please get that in your mind. Get it. Get all these other teachings, unlearn them, <laughs> toss them away, toss them to the wayside. They're, they're not doing you any benefit at all. When you call on this lard or the uh, D-O-G, if you spell G-O-D backwards, you know, if you're calling on these and you're giving praises and thanks and honor to our Father through His righteous Son, well, it's not getting there. You got the wrong address on there. You, you know, the package you're sending off, your prayers are being kidnapped by this one here, which is all of Satan and her minions. Kingdom. Their names and titles of those of Satan's kingdom. And it says so. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe it is, 4.4. Where it talks about the God of this world. Look at it, man. It's got the little G O D. And in the same verse, it's got one with a capital letter G, small letter O D. And when you look up the same exact word in the Strong's using the little tool dealy here, both of them are exactly the same. <laughs> Gods, goddesses. <laughs> yes, that's what they are. You know, and, and when you give your praises and your thanks and such to Lord or God or the Jesus, or Adonai, or El, you know, or Elohim, you know, come right out and say it, to Baal. And of course, you know, even Baal's preachers, they thought they was doing what was right, you know. They went out there slicing themselves and everything. They were so dedicated because they believed in the Lord that much, you know, but... We shouldn't believe in the Lord if we're going to desire the praises and thanks that we actually have from Father Yahweh through Yahshua or Yeshua, people call him, but definitely not a Jesus. You know, if you want to give thanks for these things, don't send it off to Satan. Don't send it to the Lord or the gods. Send it to Father Yahweh through Yahshua, our righteous king. If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, Yahweh, your Father, then Yahweh will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and very serious and prolonged sicknesses. Now, whether it comes after this time that the real horrors of these things and what we're in right now is just dress up, it's pretend, you know, this COVID thing, it's an initiation into the mystery Babylon religion is what they're trying to do. And if you know the truth, it's okay for you just to follow along. Don't, you know, go out there without your mask. In fact, you know, you don't want to be having anybody suck your righteous air in anyway so you know keep it to yourselves but then it says if you do not carefully observe all the words of the laws that are written in this book then that you may reverence this glorious and awesome name Yahweh your father then I Yahweh will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues it says there then after what? After these things? I don't know. But then the Father will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sicknesses. Moreover, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt of which you were afraid, and they shall cling to you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law will Yahweh bring upon you until you are destroyed. I mean, think about this, my friends, you know. I mean, 
What's taking place right now when they say with everyone wearing the masks and social distancing and all these other things and numbers are rising and rising to where even a guy got killed on his motorcycle and then, you know, was listed that he died of COVID, you know. <laughs> so the numbers are rising and they have to raise these numbers in order to bring about a nationwide quarantine though you got 500,000 people a year dying from smoking cigarettes you know <laughs> uh, anyway you know people dying you know the flu or these other things that are taking place you know it's a horrible thing and you know, I'm not laughing at that I'm laughing at the futility of these ones uh, that are making money off this vaccine that they, they want to force on everyone and therefore manufactured this entire situation wherein right now you've got China and the United States and Russia trying to battle it out to see who's going to be the ultimate authority in the new world order that is coming to pass right before your eyes. But it's not part of me. I have nothing to do with these things. It's not, uh, you know, it's just an obstacle in my journey. Let's say that. But Deuteronomy 28, 62. Well, once again, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in this book of the law, will the Father bring upon you until you are destroyed. Verse 62, you shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven in multitude, because you would not obey the voice of Yahweh your Father. And it shall be that just as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you righteousness and to multiply you, so the Father will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to nothing. He's talking about the ones that will come to my channel or any place else. Go to a church even and say it's all right to eat pork. And that you'll be accepted. Where you know, even in uh, Corinthians it talks about if it you know it says to come out of her, my people, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Meaning, if you touch the unclean thing. If you eat the unclean thing, you're not going to be received. And it shall be, just as the Father rejoiced over you to do you righteousness and multiply you. And yes, he lets the rain come on the wicked and the just as well. So the Father will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to nothing. And you shall be plucked from off the land which you go to possess. You know, it, it, it's going to be horrible, the things that are coming. So anyway, I wanted to put that in there to let you know that the Holy Spirit is also going to be poured out on all flesh, wherein everyone is going to have their choice at the time that it does come to allow their robes to be washed in our King's precious blood or not. Or to do so and then go back off like a dog eating its own vomit, you know, or the sow returning to the mire after it's been washed. People will have to make their own choices, and it speaks of the great falling away that's going to take place. But anyway, you know, I, I did want to uh, come over here and bring out a couple words about, uh, you know, the experiences that I've had recently with missing time. Timothy P. has had the problem. Uh, several of the brothers and sisters have noticed the anomaly of time. And I wanted to bring out a couple points of what actually I believe I've been shown is taking place. It's not something that's brand new. Okay? Anyway, we've got here in Yachin Honor John 6.15, it says, Therefore, when Yahshua perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now, when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat. They went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Yahshua had not come to them. Then the sea arose, because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they're out in the middle of this here lake going on, okay? They saw Yahshua walking on the sea and drawing near the boat. And they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. 
Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. <laughs> now, if you're rowing about three or four miles, you know, out to the lake, you got three or four miles to get back in. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't care which way you slice it and dice it. You got three or four miles one way or the other. It's kind of like how far uh, can you run into the forest? Well, you can only run in halfway because once you get there, you're starting to run out of the forest. These guys rode, you know, three or four miles and they received our king into the boat after seeing him walking on the sea. And immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. So it was like, boom, it's almost like some people being abducted, I guess, where they're just missing hours or a time warp or something where, you know, hours have elapsed, though you don't know, or sometimes you're even broadcast to the future, you know. I've had these things too, but scriptures are evading to these things. Here in Acts 8.29, it says, Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? The guy's reading. <laughs> he's reading the scroll. Okay, that's what he had. He had a scroll, and he's reading it. And Philip overheard him reading the scroll. So what's Philip ask him? Do you understand what are you uh, what you are reading? Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked this guy this while well, he's reading the scroll. What's the guy say? He says, and he said, How can I unless someone guides me? That's what I'm here for, my friends. I'm here to help guide you into understanding what it is you're reading. People today across the entire earth are reading, but they don't have understanding, just like it was pointed out right there with Philip and this eunuch. <laughs> so, so Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And the guy truthfully tells him, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture where it was read, and so on and so forth. So anyway, uh, the eunuch answered Philip, says, I ask you of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or some other man? So Philip opened his mouth, beginning at the scripture, preached Yahshua to him. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. See, now, you don't get baptized unless you believe with all your heart. And then he says, If you do, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Yahshua is the Son of Yahweh. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Father, the spirit of Yahshua at that time, because Yahshua was already sitting on the throne, on our Father's throne, with our Father. Now, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of, it's actually Yahweh, because Yahweh created the spirit before our king was even created and, and anything else other than the plan written of before he came to being just like you and I did from a virgin. He wasn't sitting on no cloud for a billion, trillion, gazillion years, strumming old McDonald at a farm or anything, you know. And then one day I had to jump down into Miriam's womb. That's not what took place. Now, when they came up off the water, the spirit of the father caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was founded as Otus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. 
So here it shows another time anomaly or a transportation, a uh, manifestation from one place to another, a dematerializing and rematerializing instantaneously or uh, the unit could have been standing there in the water for two hours not realizing you know that he was just frozen stiff you know in time <laughs> while Philip walked off you know and, and who knows what actually took place other than the spirit of Yahweh caught Philip away okay so how it took place or what we don't know but anyway I just wanted to say that these time anomalies that I was really caught up in because they was uh, really wreaking a lot of uh, mental anguish on me you know because I couldn't understand any of it why it was taking place and why it was allowed me and then I was just shown here earlier uh, before Sabbath just the Sabbath started I uh, I will show this, you know, and it's like, wow. So this took place with the disciples. It took place with our king. It took place with our king and the disciples. It took place with others as well. So it's not like these time anomalies or whatever are brand new. They were actually written of in the scripture. So, you know, with that, my friends, I'm going to leave you. I've got my Sabbath meal. I've got me some uh, nice uh, grass-fed beef, uh, Polish sausages, and I took a taste of it, and I haven't had a, uh, uh, what do we used to call those, kibasi, a Polish kibasi, in over 40 years because they're made with pork. Well, it just turns out that this uh, beef, uh, grass-raised beef, that has no chemicals, no nothing in it at all, makes one of those Polish sausages. And I took a little piece earlier, and boy, it gave me the incentive to come in and do this video. So right now I'm going to say bye to y'all, because I'm going to go eat and enjoy. Our king is waiting on me, so he will dine with me. May he dine with y'all on the Sabbath, or every each and every day of the week. And we have to bring out something here about the Feast of Tabernacles coming up. Feast of Trumpets first, but uh, we'll get with that later. And with that, I love you all. Bye.